Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You, my friend, are listening to the Happy Hearthstone. This show is brought to you by Doghouse Systems, who make some of the most powerful gaming PCs on the planet. And I can say from personal experience that they have awesome customer service. Use the code MMO Reporter at doghousesystems.com and get a free 120 gigabyte SSD. And by Audible, the best audiobook service in existence. Seriously, if you like stories at all, you've got to check Audible out. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash MMO Reporter and get a free one month trial and a free audiobook. Those ads help cover our server costs for the show, but if you'd like to directly support this show and the nice people who make it, you can go to gamediplomat.com forward slash donate and show us some love. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to episode 70 of the Happy Hearthstone podcast, the longest running Hearthstone podcast in the history of space and time and cards. I'm your host, Josh Augustine, and this week I'm joined by my brother, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, hello, brother. We meet again on this fine day. Yes, this fine evening. Evening, yeah, that's true. (laughs) This fine morning. People could be listening to this any time. Yes, we're practically running next to people on the treadmill right now. <laughs> and driving crazy. with them in their cars. We are. <laughs> We're stalking them all over the place. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is actually starting to sound illegal. I'm not sure if we should be making this podcast. It's a little, little creepy. <laughs> a little creepy. All right. So, Matt, um, you're here. Uh, I assume you play Hearthstone. Is yes, <laughs> I, am, I am here. I, I've been listening to this show for a long time, and uh, I didn't think I would ever be deemed worthy enough to be a part of the show, but I am really excited to be here. Um, I've been playing Hearthstone. Uh, it was definitely after launch, sometime before the release of Nax Ramos. Okay. So I remember Nax Ramos being like the major first milestone for my collection and experience with Hearthstone. I think Next Ramos was the very first uh, thing released. Okay, so it, so it was pretty early on. Well, I had you like kind of poking me, saying like, "Matt, you should check this game out," <laughs> you know. And it, I'm glad you did because this has uh, been my favorite game in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, you this is the game you've put the most time into in recent memory, right? Oh yeah, time and uh, secretly money. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in, in, yeah, in a long time. I mean, I, I've been a big fan of like the freemium model for yeah. a lot of games in general. Um, but this one, you just get sucked in cause it's like, well, maybe if I just bought 40 more packs, <laughs> I'll get every card I ever want. <laughs> right. My dreams will come true. So how many packs of, uh, old gods have you already opened? All right. So I did the pre-order. So that got me the 50. Uh, just today, I completed the second quest uh, to get f- the five free packs. Nice. So that's ten more, and then I've, I've with coins, I think I've gotten about nine or ten more. Okay, you're getting close to you're sure at like seventy packs right now, or something. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. All right, are you gonna get to up to a hundred packs? You think? Uh, w- well, what time frame are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> Within a week. Uh, I, I'm debating buying some more packs just because, um, at this rate, I'm still not to the point where I'm getting a decent amount of dust from each pack I open. Cause there's still so many cards that I don't have yet. Yeah. So I'm debating just to kind of get that baseline up and running so I can play a lot of these, uh, decks that are really popular right here off the bat. Yeah. And the man, there's a lot of cool decks going around. It's crazy. Yeah, it's fun early on because like every day is a whole new meta. <laughs> like people have already moved on to the next thing. I have so much respect for these people that are on like the forefront of the deck building process and like can just tweak everything. It's like I could maybe one day, but I'm just happy to be, <laughs> uh, you know, reaping the fruits of their labor. <laughs> yeah, actually. So Scott Lance, who hosts on here a lot, uh, I bumped into him in game yesterday. And he was like, hey, do you want to do some duels? Uh, Because he had already built three new decks that he was trying out. Uh, And two of them I'd never seen anybody try yet. So, And and all three of them wrecked me. So (laughs) so I'm excited. I don't want to say what they are because I don't know if if he would want me sharing them. Because I think he likes to try and and figure it out himself and kind of make them known. 
Uh, but they were really cool. So he's going to be on the show uh, actually next episode. We're going to be doing the reviews for the set. Cool. So. Yeah, I, I, I like those ones. Um, yeah, and I think this set, maybe it's just I'm biased because it's right now, but it feels like this set is more fun like than any other set. And you could have do so much crazy madness combos that like you can never pull off in a tournament or anything like important but it's like just insane to watch yeah the whole emphasis on Cthune and stuff going all in on that is is really cool yeah that was really cool that they gave us that card so i think that's the thing you're seeing the most right now right so it's like everybody you play has Cthune in their deck yeah <laughs> because why not exactly because you can yeah uh, see matt i'll get you excited for the future um, this is a super fun expansion, but I think you're having more fun with it just because you know the game better and understand like deck building better now. Okay, yeah, that's um, because, fair. Because there was this sort of stuff in like Goblins versus Gnomes too, but that's the cool thing about card games is as you play it over time, you know things better and you can look at cards and just get a better read on it right away and be like, okay, this will be really good if I combo it with this, this sort of stuff, or oh, here's the potential. It gets yes, really fun. and I'm just starting to see glimpses of that. So I like, I know I'm making a little bit of progress, but uh, I have a long ways to go still for sure. <laughs> Always, that's the beauty of card games like this with new releases all the time. Always more to do. Which is the problem with when it costs so much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the trick, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so before we go too much farther, since we've already talked about a lot of stuff, let's talk about why we're happy this week. Sure. Uh, so, go ahead. I'm going first, buddy. Well, you're the host. Yeah. I mean, I'm the I'm big brother, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Youngest brother is in charge today. <laughs> um, so I'm super excited. I've been uh, doing a lot of overtime and, and working a lot of hours on uh, at my day job at Daybreak uh, Game Company and working on Landmark in particular, which is like a really cool building exploration uh, kind of sharing game. And we just put a huge update out this week that has a bunch of stuff that I've been working on for months that I haven't been able to share or talk about at all. And it all went out, and it, it's relatively smooth. There's still bugs to squash and all that sort of <laughs> stuff, but it seemed to go really well, and people are really enjoying it. So that's been really uh, fulfilling. So would you say that you're basically the Ben Brode of Landmark? <laughs> no. <laughs> Although my laugh that I just did there was like a mini Ben Brode. Laugh. That was good. It's good. You're working on it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I got to work on it. I got to oh try. God. That was more Santa than Ben Brode. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Still, the jolliness factor is through the, the roof. Yeah, I, I did actually lean back and face my head towards the sky. Like, good. You know, sometimes. Good. <laughs> We are both designers, though, so I mean, I guess in that way. Good, good. So uh, why are you why are you happy? So I got a couple things uh, from a Hearthstone perspective. Whoa, besides, a couple things. You know, you're, you're getting look, too happy over there. Look, you, you can never be too happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, if I had a if I had a huge list, if this was like why I was depressed, then we would have a problem. Yeah, that'd be sad. <laughs> we'll um, just cancel the podcast right. and go to counseling. Just call it. Um, <laughs> so in Hearthstone. I haven't done Arena in a really long time, um, mostly Intimidation, plus just because of my skill level, I just felt like I could get packs more effectively through just doing gold. Sure. So I went back in because I haven't been in a long time because I wanted to make sure I didn't get a Goblins versus Gnome pack um, for finishing Arena. So I went in and I discovered that I had previously purchased an Arena run already sometime previously that I hadn't started. So it was like I got a free arena run. And <laughs> they may not sound like much to all the gold farmers out there or whatever, but to me it's like every gold coin is precious. Yeah. So it was like a huge discovery. Dude, um, 150, yeah. That's exactly. A and a half. Sweet. And then uh, on the personal side of things, we're going on a family vacation soon, which we don't get to do very often. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And we're actually bringing the kids with us, so it'll be a good you know, family outing. Do you know what you're not bringing with you? Uh, depression. <laughs> Your little brother. How come you uh -oh. invited on this cool family vacation? Well, okay, it's nothing fancy. It's like going to a place where there's a strip mall and a movie theater. Like, it's not like we're going to the beach or anything exciting like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Right, right. I know you're going off to like, I don't know, Maui or something. And there's, strip, there's strip malls in Maui. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just said strip mall and movie theater. That's pretty much anywhere in the first world or maybe even second world countries. You know, I didn't even say if I needed a passport or not. So we're good. It's true. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to go hide out in your luggage. Move it along, host. Move it. <laughs> I see who's in charge here. This is just like my oh, childhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh just kidding matt was really nice most, most of the time, time. Yeah. yeah most of the time <laughs> all right so uh news before we get into the actual topic we've already talked about a bunch whispers whispers of the old god is out it's a new expansion we're doing the review episodes next episode probably going to do two episodes one with class cards and one with neutral cards like we have in the past um but Matt, you kind of mentioned earlier you could get free packs, right? Yeah, so I don't know. People may be aware of this by now, but if you aren't, one of the coolest things that Ben Brode announced during the live stream um, talking about this was that they're giving away essentially 13 free Old Gods packs to everyone. So the first three you just get for logging in during the promo period. So if you haven't logged in, just open up your client and get in there and get those. Now, what is the promo period? Like how long do people have? I don't know if they actually defined it. Oh, okay. Um, I would imagine it's at least, you know, a week or two. Yeah. Um, but the sooner the better, you know. Yeah, because you, you don't have to do there. anything. You literally just have to log in, right? Right, exactly. And then yeah. f and then you also get, on top of that, C'Thun and two of his cultists um, for free. And then they give you two quests. So the first one is for completing five wins in the new standard mode. No, sorry. It might just be two wins. It is just two. Okay, yeah, yeah. Two wins, and then you get five free packs. There we go, the two and the five. And then uh, when you complete that one, you get a second quest to complete seven wins in standard mode to get five more free packs. So in case you weren't following along with the math, that is 13 free packs. That is uh, how many? Uh, 45 cards, right? Yeah, uh, 13 times five. So it's more than that. 65, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, 65 plus Cthulhu and the Cultists. Yeah, so what? 68 free cards. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's sweet. It's super generous. I mean, I, I imagine they feel like maybe this will ease the pain of people that are frustrated about all the changes going on. Yeah. Um, I wasn't frustrated, so for me, it's just gravy, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> anything to help build my collection. But thanks to all the people getting frustrated out there, so we got all these photo <laughs> stuff. Yeah, thanks for the salt. <laughs> and, uh... One of my buddies at work, actually, he just finished uh, the quest to get five free packs. Nice. He got two legendaries in those five free packs. What? I got one. I know yeah. in, in mine, but in my second five, I did not. Wow. See? Man. So there you go. So, man. So it's like they gave you a legendary and then, like, 24 other cards. That's awesome. Yeah, and the ones today, I got one of the rares that I really wanted that I didn't have yet. So I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, I... Every day I'm just like smiling, like this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is fun to it, it was fun to have quests specifically for the new standard mode to kind of play around with that. Yeah, yeah, to get in there. And I, I honestly I was a little afraid going into standard mode. Like, was I about to just get rocked by everyone who was like, you know, eons ahead of me in terms of building decks and whatnot? But yeah. I stuck in casual and it, it worked out. I mean, I ended up winning probably seventy five percent of my games. Nice. Yeah. See, Matt, casual is the place for you and I. This is where we can be happy. That's true. It's where the depression doesn't seep in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know which uh, Hogwarts house you're a part of? No, I've never. Is there like a test or something I can take online for that or uh, what? Matt, yeah. There's only <laughs> the official test made by J.K. Rowling herself on Potterboard.com. It's the best. <laughs> This okay. is amazing. Okay, I think I think Willa will be really. Willa is my wife. I think she'll be really excited about that. Okay, I will send it to you because okay. we were talking about it today at the office as we were going around. As we were telling everyone what we did the day before, it's like Scrum. It's part of our process. We had to also say what our Hogwarts house was. Uh, okay. And I'm Hufflepuff, which everyone kind of belies is like. Those are the kids that don't try real hard and they just want to be happy. And it's like, that's casual right there. I'm that's... a Hufflepuff playing casual, being, being good. I mean, I've gotten to the point where it's like, look, I don't have enough time. I have a family, full-time job. I'm not going to get past rank 15 on my best month. So like, really, what am I gaining by being a tryhard over there when I can just have fun and not like stress out about it? Yeah. You're gaining stress and disappointment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, there are people I actually 
So uh, Frid Gaming, who was on this show a while back and, and hosts his own show now, um, I really like having him on my friends list because I've actually really enjoy, started enjoying watching people play high-level ranked. Okay. Because I, I can't play, but I have him on my friends list, so I'll watch, and he's playing like in like high legendary most of the time. Yeah. And so like I'll just watch him, and it's almost like watching a pro tournament, right? Like totally. It's, like, you're watching, you're like, ooh, what are they going to do? And they're thinking through every play, and you can see the cards and what they're thinking. And then, oh, this big play happens. It's so exciting. Do you watch Twitch streams at all? Yeah, I watch Twitch streams some, um, okay. but that's harder because I, I can't have sound on. Uh, okay. Because um, I'm, I'm, we're usually watching TV with my wife. Um, and so uh, Twitch is, is fun, but it's not as fun without the sound on. Yeah, that's true. But I yeah, that's what I use for the exact same thing, though. I'll watch someone like Strife Crow or something and like kind of watch him and be like, I didn't even know that combo made sense, you know? <laughs> like, it, then it just gives yeah. me all these ideas of things to try. It's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, see, I've actually... So I do like watching Twitch streams. I really like watching it in game because I can chat with them while it happens. Oh, and most nice. of the time they'll talk back. So like he'll do a big play and I'll be like, "Wow, that is really cool." And they're like, "Yeah, I couldn't believe that happened." And kind of yeah. talk back and forth. Yeah. Because in so Twitch, there's so many other people watching, and they just like spam that chat channel. Yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> memes and stuff. Oh my goodness. Um, but anyways, all right, let's get back on topic. <laughs> yeah, all right. Because we, we got stuff to talk about today. So we talked about, uh, we kind of mentioned Standard and Wild as the new split that just happened. And that's what we're talking about today. And, it's, and we're not going to tell you kind of what happened, all that sort of stuff. It's more about like, how can you find the best way for you to have fun in, in this new world that we're in with Hearthstone and split modes and all that sort of stuff. So Matt, do you want to kind of give a quick rundown of just kind of what Standard versus Wild is for people that maybe haven't logged in recently? Sure, yeah. Like, if you've had your head in the ground and you have no idea what's going on, uh, basically, with this release, what's happened is they've decided to split the game up into two different modes, uh, Standard and Wild, where the easiest way to describe Wild is really what we've been doing this whole time. So it'll have every card in it ever. Um, there's no restrictions on the deck building. You can do anything that's crazy OP and just destroy everyone if you find that perfect <laughs> key, right? Yeah. Um, and then the standard format, it gets updated once a year in terms of what sets are in it. And um, it's with the first new expansion released each year. So in this case, it's Whispers of the Old Gods. Um, and what happens is any set that was released in the current year or uh, the previous calendar year is a part of standard. And then at the next year, when they release the first expansion in the following year, it kind of cycles the, the, the previous years out. So in this case, we're losing Nax Ramus and Goblins versus Gnomes. Yeah. So it's basically a standard is going to be recent cards kind of as time goes on. And then as they drop out of standard, you can still play them in wild. Exactly. So um, let's see. So... How do how do basic and classic cards work, right? Because so, those are the cards that come with the game initially. Right. So basic and classic is what you can consider the evergreen set. So um, the meaning that they are good in any mode, any time, for all time. Um, and I think the main reason for doing this is so that, you know, if you are a player that's been taking a break or you're new or whatever – you will have this core set of cards that you'll be familiar with the flavor of each class coming back and still see cards that you recognize and be able to build off of. Yeah, and it's really good for keeping the identities of the classes consistent. Right. Like Especially if someone comes and plays uh, the game for the very first time and they pick Mage, they're going to want Fireball, right? That's just such a Mage thing yes. to do. Exactly. Be, it would be disappointing if, like, oh no, they don't have Fireball right now. All they have is Arcane Explosion. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, or have to reprint Fireball like every year because they need mages to have it. Or exactly. Something. And to me, that's huge, right? Because especially for someone who is putting money into the game, yeah. like, why do I need to spend money to buy the same exact statted card again? Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really cool way to avoid that. Um, yeah, so you put a couple links in here to kind of blogs uh, where they're talking about kind of because they did do a nerf pass through the basic and classic cards to make sure that basically they, they hit all the cards that felt like you had to put them in every deck, like the Druid combo and stuff like that, just to make sure that, hey, Druids won't have to run these cards forever. 
Right. So, and you think about it, it's like, yeah, if you were relying on those combos, that might have been frustrating for you. But in the overall scheme of things, like this will make it so, you know, people have to make decisions about what to put at a certain drop slot, right? Like you, you actually could have some variety there depending on what kind of deck you're building. Yeah. So kind of just like exactly what you said, right? You don't want any auto includes. Yeah. Especially because over time, it would just be like, okay, now you can choose 10 cards to put in your deck because the other 20 have to be there. Right. <laughs> yeah, and the the other link I put on there is just a, a video that was on the, the blog post um, that Blizzard put out talking about standard that kind of visualizes what I was discussing about certain sets, you know, coming in and going. If you're a visual learner like me, like it was really helpful to see like, oh, I understand what will happen in 2016 and 2017 and 2018 to see like what we're going to be losing. Yeah. Very cool. So we'll, I'll put blogs or put links to all those on the blog, uh, gamediplomat.com, and you guys can check it out. So one thing before we jump into kind of giving out some advice uh competitive formats that's just going to be standard right correct so that is one reason like if you care about getting tournament points like and you know being in the top legend whatever you're going to need to play standard and uh that's that's just the way it is <laughs> yeah and and in theory p people like red bull and stuff that run their own tournaments they could run wild tournaments but all the sure. official stuff that blizzard does is going to be standard exactly okay very cool. So let's jump into it. I mean, Matt, so you mentioned, I think you said you're, you're playing standard, right? Are you going to play wild or you think standard just for you? Personally, I'm planning on doing standard. Um, I know we've had this conversation a little bit before, but it's kind of like, I, I like the idea of things changing up over time. Yeah. Um, I like being, uh, you know, since, especially even though I have a decent collection since I did start, you know, when, when Nax Ramos came out, I still like the idea of like a dynamic meta that we will have a more drastic change on when every set is released. It makes it more exciting. I think when every set is released. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's talk about reasons to play standard. So the rapidly change, changing meta, um, if you're competitive, right, like you yeah. mentioned earlier, if you want to get in those tournaments, if you want to earn tournament points, you pretty much have to play standard, right? Yep, right. And I think the other thing for standard is that um, it's just, I think it's going to be an easier, an easier place to play, right? Because with Wild, you have to know every card that has ever existed. Right. right? <laughs> Where it's like, when you're playing in standard, you only have to know like five sets or something like that. Yeah, and you can when you're playing mage, you can get used to okay, these are the you, you know the five or six mage decks that are popular. You can kind of figure out what you want to do against them. But in wild, it's I mean the name is perfect, right? <laughs> it's just gonna yeah. be crazy there. Anything is gonna go. It's gonna be really hard to kind of get the knowledge base down. And I think you know I, I like that because on both sides of it, right? Like you'll be excited when something goes away that your opponents normally use against you. So you can be, you know, like, oh, I can finally put this, build this deck I've been wanting to build this whole time. Or yeah. like at the same time, you know, you lose something and then it's like a bummer. But at the same time, you get to create something new and different. So I think it's it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, I, that's true. I, I like that incentive, especially because my favorite part of the game is building weird decks and just yeah. seeing what I can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Although I have to say, so let's talk about reasons to play wild, right? Because sure. that is a reason to play wild. <laughs> um, it's just, it's kind of intimidating because you're looking at like thousands of cards and in the future, like tens of thousands of cards <laughs> where you have to like, okay, I need to pick 30. <laughs> but it's also really cool because over time you're going to be able to be like, oh, I remember this one card from Nax. And like your friend that you're talking with you know, five years from now, has has never even heard of Nax, doesn't know that card, but you're like, Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher would be perfect with this brand new card that just came out. Yeah. And you're going to be able to put these combos together that'll blow other people's minds. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's also the element of, like, the people that are afraid of change. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as a person in IT, like, if you try and give someone a new program or like update windows on them. Like it's just like disaster strikes. <laughs> yeah. So with, with this, it's like, I could imagine if there's those kind of personalities, you think like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything different. I want to play secret paladin. That's what I've been using to dominate. You know, I, I want to stick yeah. with this. And it's like, yeah, that'll work for a little while. <laughs> Cause like even in wild, 
like like you said, right? You still just got a dump of new cards in there. Yeah. So it's still going to change what's effective and what's not. So I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's easier to wrap your mind around standard. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a really interesting point because I hadn't really thought about that. Because I, 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 when I logged in after the set came out, I didn't want to open my old guard, old god cards right away. I wanted to complete the standard one and earn more packs. Yeah. Um, so I just picked right my Dragon Warrior deck, which is that's my go-to deck. I just love that deck. Nice. Um, and all I had to remove from it was Doctor Boom. But then I, lo- as I started looking through the cards, I was like, oh man, next year, like half of this deck is just going to disappear and I don't know what I'm going to do. Cause that's yeah. like, that's like my, my safety blanket, right? Like when, totally. I, when I'm on a losing streak, I just fall back to dragon warrior and I put my thumb in my mouth and I can be happy. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like, it's kind of a ticking time bomb with some of the decks we have. And I, I mean, that's probably a healthy thing, but at the same time, it's like maybe it prioritizes like for people like us who probably can't afford to build every deck out there. Um, you know, prioritize maybe things that are going away within the next year or so, not in terms of crafting, but in terms of like cards that you will want to play with, because then you won't probably play with them much more after that. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. So if you know a card is going away, play that deck now while you can. If if it's, you know, viable to do so. Sure. I'm just yeah. thinking like if it's a deck you like, like you were saying you're a Dragon Warrior, right? It's like if you can make a, a World Gods variant of that, I mean, that's perfect for you because then you can keep kind of doing it. And I was thinking about that too, right? It's like, well, I was playing Aggro Shaman before. I was playing some Warlock Zoo before. And those have kind of translated over pretty well so far, it sounds like. And so things like that, it's like, if you're afraid of change, maybe try and stick with those um, types of decks. Yeah, new hybrids. So it's still kind of familiar to you, but you'll be able to experience some of the new and exciting stuff that may actually help you be even more successful. Yeah, that is very true. Have you seen uh, Pirate Warrior, by the way? I saw uh, an OTK, I think it was a Pirate Rogue, actually, what it was. But uh, maybe it was Warrior, I don't know. But I, I hear about things like that, and I get excited. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, I, I mean, there's always at the age of time, like, Pirates versus Ninjas, right? So it's like, yeah. anytime I hear th- things like that, I'm like, I got to try it. So try it. I, I, yeah, I, I feel like I got some of the i might even have got the pirate legendary and gotten that like one parrot or whatever oh yeah Yeah, i know some of the whatever yeah i know the reward set isn't a part of standard but that that makes me think like i probably have a lot of pirates so maybe i could pull it off (laughs) yeah because so i lost to it at lunch today and i didn't even care like i was (laughs) just having fun watching it right (laughs) that's yes so they the the trick with it is they have this new minion and I don't remember the name. It was basically a three four for three, but then it had a battle cry. If you control a pirate, give your current weapon plus one plus one. And so he had equipped the fiery war axe at the start of the game, and he just kept upgrading it. Oh like, man, it was like and, an infinite weapon. Yeah, and by the end, his last swing with it was a seven one. Wow, um, he turned so it into a gorehal. <laughs> I would play something down and be like, oh, it's cool. It has one more health than his weapon. He can't kill it. And then he'd be like, upgrade and give it plus one, plus one, then kill it. And then oh, next thing be like, okay, well, he got that out of the way. He can't do it again. Play something else. Upgrade, kill it. Like, it was really cool just to see. Because I'd seen that upgrade card a while back where you give the weapon plus one, plus one. Um, but I, I hadn't seen anyone actually make it work. And it was really good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, anyways, that's the sort of fun stuff going on in standard right now. I, I, I mean, if you haven't, if you've been listening to this and aren't excited to log in, like, <laughs> it's just crazy because this is the most exciting time I think, right after a release, to log in and just see all the cool new decks. Because you can't really go wrong at this point. Experiment with a new deck. Because you know, later people say like, oh, well, you should be choosing the good decks. Yeah, this is totally the best time to get in there. Like you were saying, like exactly. It's you're trying new things, but it's great because everyone is trying new things. Yeah. And and maybe that's why I'm having a better success rate, you know, than I normally <laughs> do because everyone's yeah. kind of dabbling right now. Yeah, well, it's cool too because uh, you don't know what your opponent's gonna do, right? Yes. Because like pirate warrior i'd never seen that before i didn't know what to expect so it was just even fun just being surprised by what the uh, what the opponent's doing and i'm i've totally had the same experience as you josh where it's like 
even when I lose, like, I don't care. Like, this is yeah. so much fun. Like, this is the way the game, I feel, is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be fair, I must say, I was, I did care when I lost against Freeze Mage. Oh, well, that's like your arch nemesis, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. And now they got this stupid uh, frost <laughs> caller, whatever, who every single time you cast a spell freezes a random oh, enemy. Man. Like, I played four turns as a warrior and couldn't do anything any of the turns, and then I died. It was, oh my gosh, I hate that class so much. If anybody out there listening plays Freeze Mage, you're okay, but... I want to say you're not okay. So that demented frost caller, I was wondering about that because he's kind of like a flame, uh, flame what is waker. flame waker, but he's more mana, right? Uh, so I I think he's the same. He's four mana as well. Are they both the same? Yeah, I think they're both four mana. Um, I I should know because my opponent had both of them down <laughs> when they were casting. Spells okay, well if turn. they're both the same, then never mind. I was I thought maybe for some reason the the ice one was a little bit more. Let me check. I I'm on the Google. No, four cost two four. Yeah. For Flame Waker same. too? Yeah. Dude, I am losing it. Well that's fine. No, that's good. That makes it even well, not for you, but that's good for people that want to use that. Oh, Flame Waker is three. You're totally right. Okay. Yeah, people were yelling at us while listening to this podcast <laughs> until I corrected. Calm it down, there. calm down. <laughs> we got it right in the end. See, this is why you're the older brother, Matt. You you got this wisdom and knowledge. Yes, that's my many years of experience. <laughs> All right, so let's talk real fast about how this is going to affect other things, right? Because I did, it, initially I was just like, oh, cool, standard and wild. But then you start thinking, like, because in normal mode, sure, there's both. But what about ranked mode? Yeah, so in ranked mode, there's both as well. So um, depending on, you know, what kind of collection you have, how new of a player you are, if it's been a while since you came in, the way they did this for the month of April is kind of good. I, I, I like the decision they came up with. Basically, the rank you had going into Whispers of the Old Gods, they essentially copied it to both your wild ranking and your standard ranking. So regardless of which format you want to play in, you could just pick up right where you left off. Yeah. And so then, you're going to have separate ranks, though, going forward. Correct. So you'll have... Um, yeah, one rank for wild, run rank for standard. They'll both reset in May. Um, the wild icon, I want to say, has vines going around it, something like that. Yeah. And then your friends will see whichever one you're higher in. Sweet. So standard for me, probably. <laughs> you're right. So hopefully standard for me as well. How many people do you think are going to get legendary in both in one month? That seems like insanity to me. Cause from, I mean, from what <laughs> you know, I, that's got to be someone's goal right now, right? I, I'm sure someone will do it. But at that point, like, I almost lose respect for you. <laughs> because <laughs> wow. I, just because the amount of time and games you have to play to get to Legend. Like, I've heard everything, you know, for like hundreds of games, right? It's like you're playing hours and hours a day. If you have time to do that twice over... Like, that is just... Maybe they're just good and never lose. Okay, well, if you have a crazy win rate, like, that's awesome. And I think someone needs to do it just to say they did. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, one other thing to mention, though, for the rewards, <laughs> don't think you're going to double up on rewards because what happens is you'll get one chest of rewards based on whichever you, you got higher in. So if, if, you got, if you got Legend in both, you're only going to get one set of Legend rewards. Okay. That's still cool, though, because yeah. then I don't feel like I have to rank up to 15 or whatever in both. Right. Yeah, there's no there's no again there. Yeah, there's no incentive really to do that. <laughs> OK. And then so actually, I don't know. How does Arena work? Because in the past, haven't they like changed it? So like recent sets were more common or something? Yeah. So Arena is going to be wild. Um, okay. So you can get cards from any set. The only exclusion is Cthune and Friends. So they are not going to be putting those cards in the arena. Well, that makes sense because they'd always be awful unless you happen to get all of them. <laughs> exactly. So, and if could you imagine the run you'd have if you got all of them, yeah. <laughs> including Cthune? Yeah, like um, Cthune, your very first card, and then the rest just <laughs> yeah. So, oh, dude, man, but can you imagine? You could have, in theory, had a deck with more than one Cthune. That's nuts. 
that would have been crazy. Yeah. Um, they, what else did they say? They said that there is also a chance, uh, like a slightly better chance, you'll get a second pack as a reward. Oh, okay. I didn't That's know that cool. was even possible. Um, and then kind of, I alluded to it a little earlier when I was talking about Arena, but it will now, the reward will always be the pack from the most recent expansion. So it was previously any pack I think you could get. Yeah. Now it's you'll always get old gods until the next expansion comes out, and then it'll always be that. Wow, ah, that's cool. Um, which I appreciate because that's the collection I'm trying to build up. <laughs> yeah, like I would be so sad to get goblins versus gnomes now or something like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so you have a link in here too for a, for a video. Yes. Yeah, just... So Hafu um, did an interview with Ben Brode because she had reached out to him asking about how matchmaking works in Arena and was kind of questioning the system. And it's really informative if you if you care about Arena and you want to know you know, more about maybe some future directions they're thinking of taking it. I think it's uh, it's worth watching. Okay, cool. So, oh, interesting. I'll have to watch that. Yeah, because I, I was always curious how matchmaking works. So he actually talks about, like, what factors are taken into account and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and in Arena, I'm pretty sure he states that it's solely based on your Arena record that for that run. So it has nothing to do with how you've done in the past – Oh, um, it's like basically if you're three and O, like you're going up against three and O. Okay. And it's not, you're three and O and you have three legendaries in your deck. Right? right. And I don't think so. And I think he kind of like skirts around certain things by saying, you know, like, well, I think this is how it is. Or like, uh, you know, last time I checked or whatever. Sure. So it's not, you know, an exact science. And I think he made it sound like too, it's something they're constantly tweaking. Yeah, but that makes sense. It, it's that's, yeah. it's kind of cool getting that insider information, you know, like what, how they're working totally. behind the scenes. Yeah. All right, cool. And then tavern brawls. What's going on there? Yeah, so tavern brawls will also be wild by default, um, unless there's some special scenario like we've seen, you know, like hey, you can only use cards that are. What was that one where it was like they could have odd attack and it was an even spell or vice oh, versa yeah, or whatever? That is so. so weird. Yeah, something like that. So unless they have something like that, or when you know when there's pre-made decks, who knows what they're throwing in there? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's wild as well. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool actually to have tavern brawls in the future where it's like you can only use classic sets and Nax Ramas or something. So it's like old school tavern brawl. Yes, that'd be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm really excited about Tavern Brawls being wild um, because, like I mentioned, if I'm playing casual, I'm probably just going to be playing standard. But Tavern Brawls are such like a fun, goofy experience anyways. I'm excited that, oh, I'll still be able to use Dr. Boom there, you know, so I don't have to just not use those cards anymore. Yeah, it'll be it'll be good. All right, and then adventures are the same, right? They're yeah, they're wild. wild as well, which is really good, right? Because when you go up some of the against some of those bosses, like you want to be able to have all the tools at your disposal. Yeah. Now I don't know if that's going to make Blizzard's job more difficult designing bosses because we can <laughs> have every weapon at our disposal. Yeah. But you know, who knows if they might do like a brawl type scenario where, like, hey, for this boss, you can only use X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, but I like the idea of being able to have everything ready to go. I do too, because that gives me hope that someday, years from now, there will be so there will be such an overpowered combo that I'll finally be able to beat those heroic bosses. Because I just can't beat them now. I haven't even tried. Like, is it worth? Because what do you get for the heroic bosses? Is it just the card back? You get you get the golden versions of, the, of some of the cards. You get the golden versions of all the cards if you beat the bosses. I thought so. Oh, maybe I do want to go back and do that then. Um, to be honest, I've only beat one heroic boss ever. So <laughs> I'm not the best. Uh... <laughs> See, for me, like, I'm so scrapped for time that it's like I'm always trying to just do my daily quests whenever I can to get the gold to get more packs yeah. to feed the machine. <laughs> <laughs> me too. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit because some cards are going away into wild, disappearing into the wild forever. Yeah. Let's let's talk about cards we're happy and sad to see go. So let's start with sad first. Um, I'll, I'll go. So there's two cards that I'm really sad to see go just because they're so effective and efficient. And I really like running them. Um, Sludge Belcher and Void Caller. Because I, I really like Control Decks and I really like Warlock. And so those cards were just staples to me and they were really fun. How do you feel about it? 
Uh, I think those are both excellent cards as well. And I mean, Sludge Bel- Belcher to me is like the definition of Nax Ramus, probably. Yeah. Like that is like one of the key cards that came out of that. And so it's like, that's probably the first card that comes to everyone's mind with it's going away, I would think, besides Dr. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. So then next I'll go into my underdogs, right? So these are the cards that I love, even though they're they're bad by all accounts, but I just love using <laughs> them. And I, and I get decent value out of them. So I, I really like playing around with them. First is Iron Sensei. Uh, the rogue uh, mech that gives other mechs plus two plus two at the end of your turn. Nice. Um, that card, is, man, when you get it behind like an Annoyatron, it just gets crazy. Yeah, I hated playing against that card when he got trapped behind something. <laughs> yeah. And then Crush. Crush was a card that I was convinced to my dying breath was a good card, um, but it just never caught on. As the warrior, it's seven cost, uh, destroy a minion. But if, if but if one of your uh, dudes is injured, it only costs three. Um, so I love that card, and I'm sad to see it go. Yeah, that was I don't I don't know if I actually had that card. Is that an epic? Uh, yeah, it's epic or rare. Okay, I don't know if I I don't remember ever really using it much. Yeah, nobody else did. Either. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're so I'm, I'm not but, alone. Yeah, I really liked having just uh, removal in there. Um, but hey, you know, it's gone now. Uh, so the legendary though, Vol'jin, because he's my favorite character in all in the entire Warcraft universe. Um, I also like playing priest too, and he's a fun, you know, tricksy guy there. He is. Yes. He, uh, that was one of the legendaries that was at the top of my crafting list right before they announced standard. And then he, oh, really? he dropped straight to the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, so you actually maintain like an Excel spreadsheet, right, with all the stuff you want to craft. Yeah, for the most part, you know, at least like legendaries and epics um, yeah. and a few rares. Like, I still cannot believe there are rares in the classic set that I still have not even gotten one copy of. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just a handful. But yeah, for the most part, and I try and like break it into tiers and like priority, right, and like how many I need and I've gotten, I don't know why I went, I went into so much effort. Like I built out this whole like dust calculator to figure out like how much, how many I can build and how much I would need to get a certain tier completed and whatever. But it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's kind of like a side addiction outside of playing the game. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Is that something you would feel comfortable putting on the show notes so people could download? Sure. I'd probably have to, um, probably clean it up and standardize it a little bit because it's it's yeah. very specific to just you know something i threw together for myself but yeah i could put something together for you guys yeah because i think a lot of people would have fun toying around with that because you can put in cards and values and kind of use a lot of the calculations you have in there already yeah it's it's definitely helpful at least to do some fast math yeah um all right a couple more cards that i'm sad to see go uh the the Naxxramas bros. <laughs> yes. Do you even know who they are, Matt? Can you? Uh, can the, the Bash Brothers, Fugit and Stalag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was another card. Like, oh. I was just, it's so fun, right? Yes. Getting that, getting the, I forget even what the name is that of the big giant they summon that's an 11-11. Oh, um, Thaddeus, right? Thaddeus, that's right, yeah. I just really liked these cards. They oh. were just both super fun. Well, every time, like when I first saw these cards, I was like, this is insane. How can everyone not play this? Like, I need to do this for every game. Yeah. And obviously it didn't turn out to be that strong, but it was like, when you got it to work, like, it was so cool. Yeah, it was so cool, especially because this was when all we had was Classic and Nax Ramas, so everyone was running Kel'Thuzad too. Right. So you could kill the last one and bring it back to life so it could die again and just keep summoning the 11-11s. It was so good. It's magic. It was magic. <laughs> I'll always remember them fondly. Yes. Um, so the other one that's kind of, I, I never really liked the card, but it did create really fun moments, especially like in Arena. It's Fell Reaver. Okay. That's the one where you like discard a bunch of cards, right? Yeah. Every time your opponent plays a card, you lose three or four cards okay. I think, out of your deck. Yeah. Um, so it was just. I never liked it because I would always lose to that. You end up milling yourself and just dying to exhaust. <laughs> yeah. 
But it was really fun because whenever anyone played it on the board, suddenly the rules changed, right? Like you weren't playing a normal Hearthstone game. You're playing an entirely different game. And it was just, it was different. It was fun. Yeah, that, man, I, I'm just now, you know, I'm ashamed to say this almost, but I'm just now wrapping my head around like using your health as a resource and your cards as a resource. Oh, yeah. So like I would always be afraid of playing cards like that. Like, why would I do this? Like, this is such a <laughs> negative effect. Yeah. Like, how could this possibly possibly have a positive outcome, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the so I played uh, Magic, which is similar to Hearthstone, it's, but it's, uh, you know, in person with a bunch of my coworkers when I, when I moved to Daybreak initially years ago. Um, and one of my friends there, the thing he always said was the only hit, the only health point that matters is zero. Yes. Like it, it, until you hit zero, your health could be a million or one. It doesn't matter. And so he said, health is just another resource. And that was, that, that was, it's really hard to wrap your head around because it's such a precious thing. And that's what you're so focused on. Right. Cause that's how you lose. Right. So it's like, yeah. well, I lose if this gets to zero. I don't want to go down even by one. Yeah. But if you oh, go man. to one, you can win. Yes. With the which, I've gotten much more liberal lately with using weapons and other things and whatever, because you're just fireballing yourself to the face now. You don't right. Cause it's like, dude, I got health to spare, bro. <laughs> that's the, that's the. The BM right before you win. <laughs> I don't need this pyroblast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then the last card I'm sad to see go, not because I ever used it in any deck ever, <laughs> but Feign Death, the hunter card that triggers all death rattle. Because the very first legendary I opened in the new set is all Hunter Death Rattle. It's all Hunter Death Rattle. Uh, and so I'm building a Hunter Death Rattle deck, and I was like, oh, that Feign Death card exists. Awesome. Because I didn't remember what set it was in. I'd never used it. And then I go to find it. No, it's God. No. Yeah. And I'm maybe right that's why they were it. able to make that legendary, right? So it's like, yeah, I don't that's know. probably true, actually. You know, they I, probably I wouldn't have made that, or at least costed it what it is yeah so it's like things like that where it's like that's where you see the flip side where it's like well now i can have this cool card because that other one went away right yeah and, that, and i can always go to wild and build it and exactly toss it in. Actually, i might do just, that That'd just be go fun. death rattle nuts yeah dude sylvanas <laughs> feign death <laughs> princess thurohan what i'll steal three of their things in one turn <laughs> glorious all right so what are you sad to see go matt so i just got a couple here the first one was kelthazad which because i mean that's almost along the lines of like you never forget your first right because it's <laughs> yeah. like he he was such a fun boss in next ramus and when i saw his effect too he was another card similarly i saw and i was just like what like how is this not like crazy op like i get all my guys back all the time yeah. like that's just insane and like you were saying right like if you combo that with a reincarnate like you can get two kelthazads or if yeah. you, you combo it with the other two brothers like you get you can just get some crazy fun stuff when it works um and then yeah that was always the trick with him like one out of ten games blew your mind right so the rest were kind of eh. <laughs> so fun um yeah if he wasn't assassinated on site yeah <laughs> um and then the other one was malganis and the reason why i did that was because he was also at the top of my crafting list but he was crafted right before they announced standard so um he was so good in the demon lock deck um similar to the one you guys feature on this show all the time yeah um and just so fun when he works and you just have a board full of like, you know, one ones, all of a sudden they're two twos and, or is it three threes or whatever? Yeah, three um, threes. I wouldn't know because I didn't get to play with him for too long, but. <laughs> <laughs> you sound a little bitter there, buddy. No, actually it's totally fine. Cause like you said, I can go to wild and play anytime I want. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was the, another one I was kind of bummed. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's talk about cards we're happy to see go into wild. All uh, right, what, what do you got? So for me, um, it's kind of like a love-hate relationship. So like piloted shredder. So I, like pretty much everyone, like this was your four drop slot, right? I mean, for almost yeah. every deck. And it, it just removes any thought process into what goes there. So I'm sad because I liked it and it was so effective, but I'm really excited to see it go away. For the same reason that the nerfs are exciting, because you get to put something else there that maybe you haven't thought about in a while, and all of a sudden can shine and just be like the new star of your deck or the meta or whatever. Yeah, totally. 
And then uh, Sludge Belcher. So we're kind of on opposite ends, right? Because you said Sludge Belcher. Oh, for, yeah. What? For sad. So for me, I just wanted to use this to highlight the another reason they're doing the standard, and is that's to control the power creep, right? So like if you're indefinitely releasing cards, like you have to come out with a card that's better than Sludge Belcher if you wanted to see play. So yeah. it, it's like, okay, so now we're going to make some card that – summons a bigger slime when it dies or something because otherwise <laughs> it would never happen right yeah so now you have that card infested torrent that came out in the current set that's not exactly apples to apples comparison but it's a taunt and summons something but it doesn't have taunt and it's got a little less stats but it's a way to kind of regulate and so i'm kind of excited because you know maybe you know i don't know if people see slowing the game down as positive or negative but it's kind of nice to be able to have new stars shine, you know, periodically and have everybody get its turn in the limelight. Yeah. That's fine, Matt. You can hate my favorite card because <laughs> I'm going to hate on yours. I'm happy to see Malganis Oh, go. snap. <laughs> because Demon Warlock is one of my favorite decks, and I never got Malganis. Mm. And so I was always sad because, like, I knew I should have crafted him and the deck would have been better, but I just didn't have the dust to do it. So now, I, now I'm guilt free. He's gone. I don't have to feel bad about not crafting Damn, him. Anymore. Living free, living free. <laughs> um, I'm, so two other things I'm bitter about. Uh, so I'm happy to see him go. Hemet Nessingwary, because that was the legendary I got out of. Uh, I think he was in Goblins versus Gnomes. Maybe I can't even remember what. Does set he it was. kill a beast or what does he do? Yeah, so he's like a. I'm gonna make up stats. Yeah, okay. But it's something like a six cost six three, uh, battle cry kill a beast. Okay. And it was just like I opened it, and you're like, oh, it's legendary, right? Before you turn it over, you can see the hover, and you're like, oh, which of the amazing legendaries, right? Is it gonna be Doctor <laughs> Boom? Is it gonna be? I don't know. What are the other ones? You turn around. Oh, uh, like literally the worst legendary. The set. It's, I don't think I ever put him in a single deck. Um, so. Good riddance, Hemet Nessing, where <laughs> have fun out in the wild. It's what he would have wanted, right? Yeah, lots of beasts out there. Yeah, he's perfect. Um, then the other one is Flame Cannon. So I hate Freeze Mage, right? We, we've <laughs> talked about this on the show. We already. have established this. It. Yeah. I actually looked through the card specifically like, okay, I want to say I'm bitter about Freeze Mage. Which Freeze Mage card went away? None of them went away. Oh, and man. so this was Flame Cannon was the closest I could find to like, okay, at least mages lose something. They lose that. That's good. And then uh, the other two that I'm totally fine to see go away, because uh, I, I didn't have much fun with them, uh, was the Iron Juggernaut, which is the warrior one that puts the mine in your deck. Oh, yeah. That deals 10 damage because it's just like, and then, it's just such a bummer way to lose. And then people are comboing with Bran. Yeah, it's <laughs> so like, you get two of them. oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, and then Mogar the Ogre. I like a lot of the Ogres that like, you know, like the Ogre Ninja. That's super funny, 50% chance to hit the wrong thing because he's dumb. Yeah. Um, but Mogar the Ogre made everything have a 50% chance to hit the wrong thing. And that's just a bit too much for me. Yeah. Too much. So I'm, I'm not sad to see that one go. Um, all right, let's last thing before we move on to kind of the, the miscellaneous stuff. What deck are you going to miss playing the most in standard? So for me, it's Mech Mage. I mean, for obvious reasons, it has no chance of moving forward in any capacity because <laughs> pretty much like 99% of the deck is in wild yeah. now. And uh, for me, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, in general, I'm kind of like a sci-fi geek. So it's like, ooh, robots and, you know, whatever. And uh, uh, it, was, it was one deck that I was fairly successful with and ranked. Like, the, the one time I got to rank 15, like, this, this deck took me on a win streak. And nice. uh, I, it was a lot of fun. Like, you could kind of mix it up, and it did just so much damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fun. No, it it gets scary, man. When it combos right, it is scary. Yeah, if you can get that train rolling. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I, I'm sad to see, I'm going to miss playing Demon Warlock. Yeah. Because uh, it lost Implosion 2 on top of Void Call. Oh, Morgan, yeah. You mentioned. So it's like, th th that's like the heart and soul of those deck, of that deck. Um, 
So we'll have to. We should have like a wild night where we go back and reminisce yes. about our old favorite ones. And you play Mech Mage, I'll play full Demon Warlock. It'll be fun. Be like the good old days. We'll be like the yeah. old men, like on rocking chairs on our porches with our tablets. I mean, that's what it's going to be, right? Like, because, you know, when we're sitting on a park bench and we're like 80 years old or whatever. <laughs> There's going to be ubiquitous <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yeah. And we're just going to be talking about our favorite Hearthstone decks from 50 years ago. And the kids will be running around like, look at my 5-5 five, five for one mana. This is so cool. Back in my day, you had to pay five <laughs> mana for a 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> you don't know nothing, kid. Oh, Grandpa. Yeah. You're so crazy. Put your teeth back in, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> Put the teeth back on. We're going to go play VR or whatever. Yeah, totally. Like, like you'll be in the game. Oh, guy. Okay. Dude, do you think we'll have virtual reality Hearthstone someday? I don't know. I, you know, I kind of, maybe it's just me and maybe I'm already old. But it's like <laughs> the whole like VR thing and like 3D televisions, like some of this stuff seems so gimmicky. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Now that I think about it, like if I could go into a Hearthstone match. Dude, and what if you were like sitting in the tavern? Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, because the whole premise of the game is you're entering this tavern. The innkeeper greets you, and there's people having fun all around. If you could look at there's like an orc pl playing a troll next to you or something, like, that would be fun. Yeah, and even if you turned it into, like, uh, yeah, like, you know, like the chess game they play on Star Wars, like on the Millennium Falcon yeah. or whatever? It's like hollow chess. Yeah, like, even something like that would be pretty sweet to, like, watch them have a more elaborate, like, fight besides, like, a token hitting a token. Oh, that would be cool. Like, if you actually saw a little 3D goblin up there. Yeah, you know? yeah. That'd be awesome. A Noetron just making obnoxious noises and dancing around <laughs> yeah. the whole time. Hello! <laughs> oh, I, a Noetron is gone. How do you feel about that? Uh, that bums me out, but did you see Psychotron? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, Sorry. it's like his uh, big it's brother. Really God, I guess. It's basically me. I'm the big brother, right? So... It's like got the beefier stats and it's more expensive. Um, but yeah, so it's not entirely gone, but I think he will always be in our hearts. He'll always be in our hearts. <laughs> Annoyingly. Yes. All right, so let's go through, uh, let's crank through some of these miscellaneous stuff. Do you just want to sure. go down the list you got here? Yeah, yeah. So the first one um, we've had some discussion on, and that's hey, do I disenchant these cards that have been nerfed? Because you get full dust value for them, not like quarter value like normal. And like, is there any penalty for doing so now as opposed to later or whatever? So the main main thing here, like just the rules of the game, is you have a brief period of time, let's say maybe a week or two almost, where after this has been announced to disenchant these cards for full value. So the question to you, Josh, I guess is, what do we do? <laughs> Well, lucky for you, Matt, I've got your answer. Good. So I'm not much for dusting. I don't dust many cards. I pretty much only dust what I have to, right, when you have more than you're allowed to have of a certain card. Right. But I made some exceptions this time. I think I got in, like, so when I, I don't clean house very often. But when I do, like, go through things and throw stuff out, I throw things out like crazy. Nice. That I'll regret throwing out the next day. Because <laughs> I'm just in the right mood, right? I just, I just clean out. Yes. So I think I got into that mood when this happened because I started going and I look. I'm like, okay, so here's the two things you want to look out for. If, you, if any of these cards, if you don't have them in any of your current decks, dust them immediately. This was my rule. Um, if I had gold versions of any of these cards and I didn't love the card tremendously, I dusted it. So like um, Keeper of the Grove, I had a, a, a gold version because it's a rare. That's 800 dust yeah. for that gold version of that rare. The, there is There are very few rare cards in the game that I would pay 800 dust for a gold version of. So I am happy to take that and be like, yep, that's half of one of the old gods legendary. I will trade that immediately. Totally. So that, that was my rule. I went through, and when you try to disenchant something, uh, it will tell you, oh, warning, this is in your current decks. And so I just tried disenchanting each one, and then it would tell me, is it in one of my decks? If it's not, get rid of it. Bye-bye. I don't like it enough to have it in a deck that I already like, uh, I'll get rid of it. The one exception was commons, because you get like 10 dust or whatever. I didn't even bother dusting those. Yeah, it's not worth too much. And yeah, I, But r rare enough, I did that. Yeah, so like my experience was I immediately dusted all the extras without you know thinking about it, and, uh, and the golden ones. 
But then you kind of talked me over the ledge uh, of doing more <laughs> because I, I like you. Like I love <laughs> the phrase is normally talked you back from the ledge. Yeah. I actually talked you into jumping. Yeah, because I'm just, like you said, man, cleaning house. So yeah. like to me, I'm like, yeah, but this is an epic. Like, yeah, but this is, yeah, but this is. And it's like, well, worst case scenario for all of these is you can craft it again at no loss to you. Yeah. So if that that's, if that's the downside, like <laughs> there is no downside because it's like if they've been nerfed, chances are people might ignore them for a while in the meta anyways. Yeah. And now you can go craft that hot new whatever that you want that just came out in old gods. Or if you're like me, I'm still collecting plenty of epics and legendaries from the classic set that it's like I, I want to keep on my radar. So you can get almost more value out of it that way. Yeah, totally. I mean, these are pretty rare windows where they nerf cards. I mean, this is the most cards they've ever nerfed at once. Exactly. And that's kind of why I, I was also talked into it. Because it's like, well, this is kind of like a one-time thing. That's also It's like a Hearthstone holiday. Yeah, secretly, that's also why I was talked into buying an extra 50 packs or whatever before <laughs> the announcement. Because I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get some nerfed cards. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a secret discussion just between you, me, and a few thousand other people. <laughs> oh, yes, dude. We got a thousand listeners. That is epic. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think, so last time I checked, I think we were getting like 7,000 wow. per episode. Dude, this so. is this is awesome. I'm so glad to be here, Josh. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here too, Matt. We've been oh. talking about Hearthstone at family get-togethers for years now. I know, right? <laughs> Now All we're right. secretly talking about it uh, with thousands of other <laughs> yeah. Good, good. <laughs> Who don't read my bank statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't care, dude. They're, they're, they're cheering on every 50 <laughs> packs you buy. Right. All right, so what, what's the next question we got? Okay, so kind of along the same lines, right? So it's like, okay, I disenchanted some cards. I've got a fat stack of dust. How soon do I start crafting these old gods cards? All right. You're going to be tempted to start crafting them right away, especially when you lose to a deck and you're like, wow, that other deck was amazing. I better build it so I can win. <laughs> uh, resist that urge at all costs. That is like primal you shouting at you. <laughs> and you must demand civilization. You need to wait at least three weeks is what I'm going to say. Because the meta is so crazy. There's so many decks out right now that... A lot of times if you're losing to decks, it's not necessarily because that other deck is perfect or it's even going to be good long term. The meta is going to be shifting like crazy. Aggro Shaman is good right now. But in three weeks, maybe all the popular decks just shut that down. So you don't want to be crafting those cards. Uh, you, I, I think three weeks is the minimum until you can get a better feel for, okay, this card has made it through the gauntlet or this deck has made it through the gauntlet. It's going to be good enough. I can craft towards that. So I think I just thought of an analogy right now. So uh, let's say you're filling the board with minions, and that's equating to you crafting legendaries. And okay. your opponent plays Brawl. <laughs> and that's basically <laughs> what's happening right now in the meta because <laughs> everyone is throwing everything in there, and you don't want all your you know, hard-spent dust gone to waste and you know, have one of those be useful when you could you know, just wait a few <laughs> weeks and then get exactly what you want. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's, that's a perfect analogy. It's like, don't overextend. You don't exactly. overextend when you're playing. Don't right. overextend when you're crafting. Exactly. And I think you know, on top of that, the other point I wanted to make was at least wait until you finish the quest to get the 10 extra free packs. Because oh, yeah. you never know what you're going to get. Ten packs is still a decent amount of packs. And like you said, like we know at least a couple people that have gotten legendaries in them. Like There's no like sinking feeling in your gut like when you yeah. just crafted something and then the next pack you open, it's in there. Yeah, because you get just a fraction of the dust. So, I mean, I mean, maybe we should even go so far as to say, I'm doing it. I'm taking a bold step right now, Matt. Do it. Talk you me over the not. ledge. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, <laughs> hey, I threw you back up on the ledge, and now I'm throwing you down a okay, second time. Let's do it. I can handle it. <laughs> you should not craft any cards until you are positive you will not be buying any more old god packs. Boom. Boom. That's crazy. Dude, that is crazy. Now, unless you're planning on spending like a Christmas bonus on it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But if you're waiting till Christmas, that's far too long, Matt. That's... What, t eight months away? That's true. Why? <laughs> I will gladly buy packs today for what I will pay for next Tuesday yeah. <laughs> or whatever that is. 
<laughs> yeah, dude, you got me beat. You're the older brother, Matt. You and your Popeye references. Right. I was busy watching Pokemon and look, Ninja Turtles. Look, man, so Popeyes whatever. were reruns, okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, uh, all right. So, what other questions we got? All right. So, the other thing I kind of want to just brush on was some of the UI changes they brought in, mm -hmm. um, along with standards. So, um, there's new filters now for the sets, which is very nice. So, when you're building a deck, like if you want to build a deck for standard, like it's going to filter it for standard. So, you don't have to like wonder like, oh, which cards can I put in here or not or whatever. <laughs> um, there's still a bug though when you go to craft cards where it doesn't show your gold and regular side by side. So like mm. if you were to happen to have one of each, like one uh, regular and one gold, you wouldn't know it. Um, so you, you, like you would have two, but then you might craft one thinking like you only have one or whatever. Um, but Yongwu said he's gonna, it's going to be fixed in the next patch, so I'm going to hold him to that. You're going to hold him to that? Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's what I'm counting on, Yongwu. I don't know if he listens to this podcast, but... Uh, I think he does. Nice. He, he, yeah, he's always really kind and talks he, back it, with us. Yeah, and he actually responds to stuff on Twitter. Like, he's super cool and super yeah, uh, responsive. Really yeah. Um, and then one of the things that's gotten a, a, some uh, controversy around it is they replaced the sorry emote, and, and now it's wow. And I don't know if they were thinking it was sarcastic, but it's like, this is almost more sarcastic now. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, at least. I got it used against me when I used Cthulhu poorly today. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, at least before it was like, okay, say you stepped away, you went AFK for a second, or you forgot to hit the end turn button. You could say sorry before. Now you just say wow or whatever. Yeah. Like, or now, like you said, like on a misplay, they're just like astonishing. And it's like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and especially if it says wow, you just picture the drawn out like, wow exactly like wow. real like really <laughs> really yeah um and then although i will say matt cross game synergy world of warcraft wow now there's a wow emote in hearthstone what yes okay okay i see what you're doing there guys i see what they're doing so maybe you're just inviting them to play wow with you and look now we're already talking about it yeah <laughs> they've already true. won <laughs> um and then i know you talked about it during your dust bowl video but how about that pack opening animation for the old <laughs> gods? Yeah. So gross. Oh, it like explodes into fleshy giblets. And it does that like, you know, that effect where it looks like it's splattered on the screen and like dripping down. Yeah. And the sound is just, oh, God. Horrendous. Yeah. So if you want to see it, if for whatever reason you can't play the game, well, that this is a dumb sentence. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> that can't play the game, go see the game. It's also on my video on just the go blog. Open, you get free cards, so it's not like you, you can even say you don't have any money to do it. Like yeah, just, true. just go, go get it. Go see it and be disgusted. Totally. And then uh, last but not least is the new game board they added for the old gods. I don't know. You've probably seen it too, but it's basically like a corrupted version of the original game board with the eagle and the yeah you know, the stormwind the, one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah, fun just like squishing things and poking yeah. eyes and whatever. And seeing the griffin with like tentacles growing out of its yeah. head. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Um, oh, you had other questions here. Sure. Yeah. You want to go over those too? Yeah. All right. So out of the four old gods, there's four, right? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I think I there's my research. I, I didn't there's see these four. questions. Uh, I think there's Yogg Saron, Nazoth, um, Cthune. And Yasharaj. Yash um, so the question is, which one are you most excited about? Oh, man. I'll let you think. Well, do you know what they all do? Oh, you're talking. Oh, I was thinking lore wise. No, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. I don't know enough about lore because I'm not a huge WoW guy. Yeah, so yeah. I'm more thinking, like, just from, like, what are you excited about? Okay, this is going to be a lot easier then, because I was going back and trying to remember what all of them did throughout the history of Azeroth. <laughs> and trying to remember, like, no way. I won't, I, won't, right. I won't test that today. All right. Phew. Thank you. So, all right. So who's yours? So for mine, it's Nazoth. Like, from the first time I saw it, like, right before Standard came out, I kind of got into doing the Death Rattle Rogue. And when I saw Nazoth, I was like, ooh, tasty. Like, this this <laughs> sounds really good. And it wasn't one of the, the legendaries that I got. So it's towards the top of my crafting list. Especially because, you know, we were talking about crafting a little earlier, too. Like, I'm a little, little hesitant to craft class legendaries. Because you're yeah. already, like, it's such a pigeonhole thing where it's like you're limited to what kind of decks you can build. So, like, the old gods and maybe a couple of the other 
neutral ones that it's like like this one where it's like it can fit in a lot of different classes and can do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, totally. Oh, so if and if you're not aware what Nazat does, when you play it, it uh, resummons your death rattle minions. Oh yeah. So I gotta say, even though it's not technically one of the old gods. Can I say the bogey monster? <laughs> because that card is hilarious. Dude, that that card is getting thrown so much shade. Like really? Yeah, like yeah. people are like, I opened fifty three packs and the only legendary I got is the bogey monster. <laughs> but it's such a good card. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a good card. It's a hilarious card. Right. Like I heard about it and I just started laughing, right? Because it's like, yeah. oh man, like Perfect. that's the monster you cry about when you're a child. Like <laughs> Yeah. So good. So I think my favorite card is actually Yog Saron. Okay. Um the battle cry where cast a random spell for <laughs> each spell you've cast this game and the targets yes. are chosen randomly is just crazy. I, I, I haven't seen it in game. I've only seen videos so far. Uh, but one of my buddies, uh, he got it played against him today. Uh -huh. um, and he had Sylvanas. And so yogg Saron came down, played it a few spells. Uh, I think it, it did some, it somehow killed Sylvanas. <laughs> yes. It stopped. Yog saron went to his side of the board and then started casting spells from his side of the board. I thought that was just... That is nuts. That's the sort of like Blizzard thought through every combination of things that could happen, and that's just really cool. Yeah, it's so fun. Watch Like, I could sit and watch those, like, all day. Like, those yeah, videos. Those like, it's... Random spells? It, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, it's just like, you never know what you're going to get. And it's like, these people are playing this, too. Like, it's such a high rank. Like, some of these guys are in, like, Legend doing this. And yeah. I'm like, that seems kind of risky, but that is so cool, like, just to watch him do that. Yeah, it is. Man, you know, now that you mentioned, like, that you could watch it all day, one of the coolest things I thought Riot Games, uh, which made League of Legends ever did, was they made a Twitch channel where they had basically built code on the back end to track every time a Teemo died, which is a champion <laughs> in the game. That's really hated yes um and so the twitch stream was just called timo dies and it was just clips of timo dying it was live streaming right hopping between games so <laughs> ev you could watch timo's die forever oh man so if you're having a bad day just yeah. pull up that twitch channel and you're just gonna turn that smile or that frown upside down yeah it was so cool because it did like 30 seconds right before he died so you'd look and you'd be like, he's full health by himself. How is he going to die in 30 seconds? And then you just see this crazy thing happen. Yeah. Like, I would love a stream that's just yogg over and over totally. and over. Totally. I right? would watch that. That'd be so fun. Like, show two turns or something <laughs> before yogg shows up. Then show that and then move to the next game. Yes. That'd be so fun. Oh, man. All right. So the other thing you got here is sleeper class. Yeah. So I'm defining a sleeper class is... Basically, like kind of like your underdog thing, too, where it's, you know, people are saying, oh, this class lost so much. They're going to be terrible. And, you know, there's the obvious classes that are, people are saying, like, oh, Shaman is going to blow everyone out of the water. Yeah. Right. So, like, what are some of the classes that maybe are one class that isn't on everyone's radar that you think might do well in this meta? Oh, man. Well, after that warrior pirate, I'm tossing warrior back in the mix. Yeah. Uh, I was really impressed by that, and that caught me totally off guard. And it's totally fun. Yeah. Pirates. <laughs> pirates. Yeah, man. I've wanted a pirate deck forever, but it's it's never actually been good. It's been, like, acceptable at some points, yeah. but it's never been, like, really good. Like, not enough of them, right? Yeah. And yeah, because there's just there's so many that are just mediocre that you have to run because you need pirates. Yeah. Um, but this is really cool. Yeah, so for me, I said Rogue, um, mostly because people were, after the nerfs, especially to Blade Fury, Flurry, yeah. people were like, well, what are Rogues going to do now? And Because uh, that's like kind of been their go-to thing. And I've already been like shredded by some Rogues, like playing on casual, you know, whatever. Even like Mill Rogue lives. Like I just got owned by that. Um, yeah. And I'm sure there is other things like with the death rattle and other things that'll that'll come along, but uh, I'm predicting better things for it than what people may think. Nice. Well, I hope so. Rogue is always fun, but it's a hard class to play, man. Totally. Like I, that is definitely my least played class, but to me, it's like the most interesting 
to play, like because it's so complicated. Yeah. And the thing I love about it, so many of this, the decks like milling and stuff just require you to look at cards totally differently. Totally. All right, cool. So any other thoughts about uh, standard, wild, old gods? Any parting advice before we jump into the community stuff? Uh, just get in there while you can get your free packs. For sure. Yeah, at least log in at the very, very minimum. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, first, we got a new iTunes review from Madison Cascade. Five stars. Uh, if only dot, 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 dot. Oh, man. It sounds like it's actually the start of a, a negative review. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or maybe like a requited love letter. Oh, or something. snaps. Yeah. If only. <laughs> like we're in Victoria. Oh, there you go. Uh, That's a much more positive look on it. Yeah. Hey. I, this isn't called the Depressing right. Hearthstone I need to, podcast, right? Right. So let's see. I'm going to try and do this in a Victorian style. If only playing Hearthstone were always as enjoyable and stress-free as this show. T-H-H. What is The oh, Happy the Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Dude, you've got an abbreviation going around now. What? <laughs> Dude, we got sweet Victorian abbreviations. This is, this is, leg this is legit. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Madison. This is rad. So T-H-H. It's not the best show for hardcore players or anyone wanting to follow the pro scene. But it is the best Hearthstone podcast for anyone who just plays for fun, who still wants some expert advice and perspective. I really learned a lot from this show in the early days, and I keep coming back to it as a respite from the hype and roller coaster of the latter, Kurt Meta, Reddit, pro <laughs> tournaments, etc. I know how you feel. Sometimes we just need a place to relax, kick back, have some fun, and not worry about ranked for a little bit, you know? This is that place, my friends. <laughs> this is a safe zone, uh, unless you play free ma Freeze Mage and then get out. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, kidding. Man. We love you too. I'm gonna get hate letters because the one time, I don't know if you were listening back then. Cause this is a long time ago, Matt. But Adam Clegg, one of the guys I work with, uh, designer on H1Z1, uh, came on the show and <laughs> just talked. <laughs> several times about how much he hated murloc decks and everyone that played them yes i do remember <laughs> that like two months all of the reviews <laughs> all the letters we got were all about oh, da -da -da, signed a dirty murloc player <laughs> <laughs> yeah good i don't think i said anything i hate too much so i think we're good here you're good you're safe i'll get it out of you there's <laughs> um so donations we did get a donation so last episode uh, I kind of pitched um, trying to get people to donate in for the Old Gods pre-order because uh, we'd done this in previous expansions because if you donate, you get a one-for-one, one dollar is one pack. Um, and then we open it, and while we open the packs, we say, you know, okay, Craig, for example, this time, sent a donation. So Craig donated these cards. Then you open it, oh, Craig got us the legendary. It's really fun. Um, so Craig sent in 25 bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, Craig, he, he included a, a note that I'll read in a second, but... Nobody else sent a donation, so I, even though it's killing me, it's <laughs> killing me, I only opened half of the Old Gods pre-order, because uh, I really want to try and get uh, donations in to cover the other half. Uh, so if you want, you can sponsor the other half, 25 bucks. All the cards that get in there, you will get the fame and notoriety that comes along with everything open there. Even if it's the uh, Boogie Monster. Even Oh, especially <laughs> if it's the Boogie Monster. <laughs> Listen, if you open, oh man. I got to come up with something, but if we open the Boogie Monster in these remaining packs, if you are the one that donated, I'll come up with something special. I don't know. What? Man, I got to come up with something cool, though. But if we get the Boogie Man from your pack, you can come on You come on the next show immediately? I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll send you, you, can, you can name a segment about over the, about them or uh, oh, there you something go. something that's like Old God's cards, like if you're reviewing them or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, may Oh, there you go. They can weigh in on the review episode, maybe pick a couple cards they can say. That'd be cool. Boom. Done. Good work, Matt. All right, so if you want to weigh in on the review, because <laughs> uh, it'll be me and Scott, but we'll, we can bring you on for a couple or, cards or have you record something or just send in your thoughts on paper, whatever works. Yeah, maybe even better, yeah. they can ask a few questions about specific cards. Oh, yeah. That would, you can have it. That would be oh, helpful. that's good because – our reviews for the expansion, we don't cover all the cards because that would take 10 million years and plenty yes. of other people have already done that. Um, so you could pick special cards that you want us to make sure we cover. So even if it's not our favorite or least favorite and stuff that we do in our reviews, uh, we'll make sure to talk about certain cards. Boom. All right, so Craig sent a nice note along with his uh, donation. He said, thank you for all the great work you do and for helping me to have fun in this awesome game. I love the podcast and I really enjoy being a part of the Google Plus community. So actually... I should give a shout out to the Google Plus admins and the Google Plus group that we have. 
uh, because they ha I started there and I was actually moderating it pretty heavily early on. Um, but ever since the admins there have kind of taken over and run with it. Uh, and they've been really, really cool. So I, I just let me give a quick mention. Let me see if I can easily pull up their names. Because they've grown the group, let's see, to six and a half thousand people in here now. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. And I mean, really awesome. That's that group is one of the main reasons I even have a Google Plus account. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, because like I don't really talk to anyone specifically. Like I only use Google Plus for the groups, because yeah. they do that so much better than Twitter or anything else. Like it's it seems well well thought out. Yeah, it's really well done, and like you can pin stuff, and it's easy to scroll through. I I really like it, and and the mods have built awesome categories too. So you'd be like, oh, I only want to see deck analysis and critique, and you go to that like subsection of the group, and it filters out the posts based on that. Nice. It's really cool. So if you haven't checked that out, highly recommend it. <laughs> kind of like Matt said, I don't go to Google Plus very often anymore, but this is really the only group I go to. Um, but so thank you to the moderators. Uh, Kenneth Judy has been around basically since the beginning. He's done a ton of work, and he's posted there every day. Uh, Franklin Morrison, Troy Snell, and Aristo Craig are the current moderators right now. We had a couple other moderators. Uh, it looks like uh, they, they might have moved on. But these are the guys going, and they're posting on every single thing and moderating, keeping the spam out of there. I haven't seen spam in there since I was running it. So these guys <laughs> are doing a better job than me. Nice. Uh, but they do a really good job. So thank you to all those guys. And if you're looking for a group just to talk about Happy Hearthstone, uh, like Craig was, uh, just go to Google+. Plus. It's really cool. So all right. So we did the Dust Bowl, Matt. We opened 25 packs all sent from Craig. Um, we got a lot of cool cards. You can watch the live stream to see all the cards that we got on uh, GameDiplomat.com. But we're going to pick one card to hypothetically save and dust each. And I got to go because, Matt, I got Golden Princess Hoo Hoo Ron. Any Golden Legendary is just amazing. Right? It's super cool. So I actually hadn't looked through all the cards ahead of time. I wanted to kind of be surprised as I played. So this is one of the cards I hadn't actually heard of before. I was kind of blown away. Like a 6-5 five for 5 is already good. And then when it comes in, it triggers a death rattle on any on another of your minion. I've already pulled it off twice, triggering Sylvanas. Oh, man. Yeah, the very first, so the very first time I did it, uh, the enemy had a Sylvanas down. And I dropped mine and stole their Sylvanas. So then my side of the board was two Sylvanases oh, and uh, the Golden Princess Hoo Hoo Ron. And I think it was actually against Scott. And we were chatting, and Scott was just like, wow. <laughs> Cause he, but I felt good because Scott had beat me like four games in a <laughs> row. And, th and then I finally got the dream play, right? Like that's nice. the best play you could possibly get. Yeah, It was glorious. So I'm keeping that card. I will never get rid of it. Yeah, the card I chose to save was also a gold, and it's a, the Faceless Summoner. It's a mage card. Uh, six mana, five, five with the battle cry. Summon a three mana minion. And that's such great value uh, for one. Um, yeah. And since it's golden, it summons a golden minion. So it's like you're getting a twofer on the golden factor. Yeah. Um, so good. So good. Yeah, that card is really interesting, too. Like straight up value, it's hard to beat that. That's, I think it might even be better than a piloted shredder just on stats alone. And it's a battle cry instead of a death rattle. Oh, you're right. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. All right. So. I agree that choice. Good choice. Yeah, there was actually a lot of really fun cards that Craig got us. Totally. Uh, it was really cool. Um, so we got a dust. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I don't care that I'm getting a small amount of dust. That demented frost collar must go. <laughs> so what about you? Uh, <laughs> I did the Amgam Rager. Um, I don't know why. I mean... I what? I don't know enough about, but you know, like there's the core rager and the ice rager. Oh yeah. A magma rager or whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of these ragers. Um, it's a three mana one five and you know, more power to blizzard for keeping these ragers coming, but <laughs> I am not ever, ever going to put one in a deck on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Like the only thing I can think is priest usually like cards like this because they can buff them up and keep them healed but you know what yeah. i wonder if this is a way are all the ragers three mana because now looking back at that card we just talked about the faceless summoner yeah. it's like maybe it's a way of leveling that guy out so if oh. you start getting like the weaker cards out of it it's not a big of a deal oh that's very true yeah because 
uh, Scott, I think, has been on the show and talked about that's about how they stealth in their yeah. parts like that. That's what it feels like, uh, right? Yeah, it totally does. Also, did you notice the Amgam Rager? It's magma backwards and the stats are flipped perfectly. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I did not. How did, did you just recognize that or did you read that somewhere? No, I just recognized it right now when I was looking at it because I was trying to figure out the name because the name made no sense. Exactly. But then I looked and I was like, oh, it's actually backwards and the stats are reversed. Oh, I wonder if, I wonder what's the flavor text on that? Because I feel like it's something strange and I wonder if it's the flavor text of Magma Rager backwards. That would be hilarious. Let's see. I'll look it up on Hearthbone real fast. Yeah, if you can do it quickly. I don't know. Oh, doing it so quickly. Uh, I don't know where it says flavor text. Oh, yeah, it says, oh, <laughs> it's it's power creep backwards. Oh, there you go. Yeah, power creep for a one five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Super funny. Very cool. All right, so let's go to card of the week because we have an exciting one to talk about. I'm super excited. Yes. Um, but before we get into that, you know what time it is, right? Oh, man. It's the song time. Yeah. All right. So the song, I kind of tried to go with like an old gods theme. So like I, okay. I straight up corrupted your song here, bro. <laughs> what? All right. Are you ready? I'm so ready. All right. Corrupt me. The card of the week song. You know that it isn't very long. It's fun to hear of something new. You hope that it might save you. But in the end, you know it won't. By the way, your friends, all of them will betray you. It's the old gods card of the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I felt like I was like, on the haunted mansion totally right like i kind of right. felt yeah. like i was i was pulling that but uh, you know all, all <laughs> copyrights and all that you know copy. <laughs> yeah i felt like i was on a generic haunted house ride yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome and i normally i would dock points because technically you didn't sing oh that's... but the old gods cultists like doing like a chant yes. feels pretty right. Like it felt good for it. I know. I, I, know. I thought you might bust me because it was more like reading a poem or something. But yeah, but if it, it fit the old gods, like I could see someone chanting that as they're you know summoning up some tentacle monster. Okay, good. So you get by this time. Whew. All right. C the card of the week is the Blade of Cthulhu. This is a rogue epic. It's a minion. Nine cost four four. Battle cry, destroy a minion, and then add its attack and health to Cthulhu's wherever it is. <laughs> so you, you saw this get played already, right? Yeah, so on the live stream um, with Ben Brode and uh, Frodan, this was one of the first games where the, this guy just comes out of nowhere because it, it had this card had not been announced yet. So <laughs> he just comes out of nowhere. All of a sudden, this huge guy is dead, and you see Cthulhu like take this huge, you know, buff and like bubble up on the side of the board, and you're just like, "Oh, jeez, like, <laughs> I'm insane." Dope. And like, if you think about like, if the other opponent, you could strategically, if you're playing another Cthulhu deck, and you can absorb the pain, let them play theirs first, then you like steal their Cthulhu or kill their Cthulhu, and like add the stats to yours. Yeah, and then dude, play I mean, yours. That's the dream, right? right, that's the dream. Oh, man. This, I am so excited for this card, and I really hope it's viable because I can't wait for pro play when two Cthulhu decks are going head to head rogue Cthulhu decks. Yes. And it's just like chicken, right? Totally. It's like, who's going to drop their Cthulhu first? Because you know, as soon as they do, the other one's going to drop this, and then there's the two next turns. It's going to be really cool to see kind of players try and outsmart each other with it. Yes. The nine cost is brutal, but it's a super fun card. But you still get a body out of it. You do. So it's yeah. like that oh. that can still be a decent swing turn if they just have like one large minion. Because like there's so many large minions in this set. Like, yeah, it's true. I mean, the rogue assassinate is what? Five mana, I think? Yeah. To kill. And so here you're paying a five and one stat premium. So you're paying half a stat or you're paying one stat to get the add it to Cthulhu's oh, uh, perk, which I mean is pretty pretty good just siphon those stats <laughs> siphon them steal them all <laughs> and then drop your cthulhu and deal 40 damage <laughs> exactly super cool all right um all right so i think that's a show 
Um, we're going to have full show notes along with links to all the videos, uh, the live streams, the Dust Bowls, all the videos that Matt talked about. All that's going to be on GameDiplomat.com. Just click on Hearthstone at the top and you'll find it right away. And as always, we'd love to know what you thought of the show, what you'd like to see added in future episodes. You can go to Google+, Plus, Happy Hearthstone, talk with everybody. Uh, and thanks again to all the awesome mods doing great work there. And then, or you can contact me on Twitter, at jaugustine, or email ajosh at outlook.com. Or just, hey, leave a comment on the blog and we can chat there. And if you enjoyed the show, or hey, if you want to sponsor <laughs> the rest of those old god packs so I can open them and see what's in them because it's killing me. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. <laughs> Please consider supporting us. Uh, you can find more info at gamediplomat.com forward slash donate. Uh, Matt, where can people find you? Yeah, so recently I created an account on Twitter called Hearth Starter. And basically what I'm doing that, it's a Hearthstone-focused account that does curated news and discussion. And it's from a casual player's perspective because it's my perspective um, that's trying to just get better and... Uh, you know, I'm trying to build like a community around that of people that want to learn but aren't like super hardcore about it and just kind of want to talk about it. So if you want to come chat with me on there, I'd be happy to 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 talk with you. Yeah, it's actually been I so I followed a while back because you're my brother. Right, thanks. So. <laughs> but it, it's actually been really nice because you keep you stay on top of what all the news is going on and you just kind of retweet stuff. So I feel like I don't even have to like check out Hearthstone Reddit because all the important stuff you're just throwing into the, yeah. the Twitter feed. I try and really do the nice. work for you. So I've got, you know, RSS feeds. I've got, you know, bookmarks on my browser and, you know, trying to just do my part to help, like, casual people like myself. Because I just feel like there's a little bit of a gap there, right? Because a lot of times when people are trying to get better, it's always like, how to hit legend. And it's like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going for that. I just want to have fun, but I want to have be good at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's uh, at Hearthstarter. Uh, you follow on Twitter. And Matt, thanks for uh, coming on the show, dude. Hey, I am so stoked to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was really fun. And I guess uh, I'll probably see you, uh, I don't know, soon? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this, this is weird. I feel weird saying goodbye to you. Uh, right. We live close together. <laughs> we see each other. I know, right? So maybe I'll see you uh, this weekend or something. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple days. <laughs> Have fun on your sweet, awesome vacation going to Tahiti. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you back a shirt. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> and I'll just be playing Hearthstone while you're going. Yeah. There you go. All right, and to everyone else, thanks again for visiting the Happy Hearthstone and having a little fun with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.